But, uh, mm -hmm. When you let you know what? I didn't have it on record. Until you get into the real narrow places. Ancient volcanoes.
Yes, of course, on the big side. used to be called Maidos. It was an old mm. Ottoman fishing Greek town and it was called Maidos. Also the name of the restaurant was Maidos as well. Mm. From this place, like we draw like this, and now we are on this side of the peninsula. We are at the Kabatepe. This small area called Kabatepe. The beach on this side, like the long one, which is just down below us, it was the intended landing beach. The Anzac, like, you know, they're supposed to be land on that side. But when they made the mistake, they gone one mile north and they landed in a tiny cove, which is like just on the other side of the point at the end of the beach. Actually. You can see the big white memorial up on a hill. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the Lone Pine, the Australian Memorial, Lone Pine. Mm -hmm. Like on the first day, on 25th of April, the Anzac got the Lone Pine, even a bit further more. Like everything just happened between Long Pine and a Chinook Fire in that small area. Just right on that side. You know, like this is whole Galopoli Peninsula. And this is the Dardanelles. The Turks, we call it Chanakale Boazi, the spread of the Chanakale. When you go up to the north, like there is an inland sea of Marmara, Istanbul, Bosphorus and a Black Sea. And on the south, Aegean Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. It is very vital sea route here actually between Black Sea and the Mediterranean. I can say about nearly 55 or 60,000 ships are passing through from this sea route every year. Mm. Which means every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes, one ferry. Mm. And mo they mostly carrying oil or petroleum products from Black Sea down to the Mediterranean. And it was vital in the history as well. You know, that's why it's salted by the Britain and France. And the Galopoli Peninsula it was declared as a National Historical Park in 1973. After that time, like there is no construction of industrial permitted in the park area here. And as you know, like in 1915, we lost it, thousands of our soldiers from both sides. And the globally campaign, the Turks, we call it Çanakkale <coughs> Battle. You know, the Çanakkale is the biggest town in the area. Nearly everything started from the big battleships. Early in the 20th century, Ottoman Empire, they were losing all their soil, all their power after the Balkan War in 1912 and 1913. Just after the Balkan War, Ottoman Empire ordered two big battleships to Britain. They paid their money is everything. But after war break out in Europe, British Empire said we can't give it all battleships, we will use it in our navy. And Ottoman Empire couldn't say anything. But one of our commanders, Anwar Pasha. You know, it was the wrong place for them to land it to the Enzaco, but it might be the good feature for them to land it there because none of the Turkish guns that Kabatepe had land, they could not reach that much far actually. They could only bombard on this beach here. The name of the beach, like it is Kabatepe in Turkish, Kabatepe, but the British name it Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach. You know. I guess many Brighton Beach names, right? Yeah. <laughs> and as you know, like last couple of years, they say they didn't make the mistake. They had a last minute change, and that's why they gone one mile north, which I had selected, and was more closely overhung by steep cliffs. 
you know, Hamilton says, well, in 1915, they made the mistake and they go on one wall, not actually. They should have landed on this Brighton beach. And, like, Cedar Island on this side, the big one, framed in Egypt. After Egypt, they came to Lemnos, like about a hundred miles away from here on the south, and Imros. They used Oz Island for everything. I mean, the hospitals, headquarters, everything was in the Lemnos and Imros. And on the first day of beach here, what could happen? No one can give these answers at the moment. But I say, we had only four artillery guns and about 30 men on the point. And, like we are talking about, 15,000 Anzac, which landed at Anzac Hole. Now, if they were landed here, they could have easily captured the Turkish guns on the point. Like, 30 men against the 15,000, which is nothing, you know. And also, the battleships were out there. If they were bombarded the area on first time, they could have easily knocked out the Turkish guns from the point. But they say they just want to make a big surprise for the Turks to send troops in. And after they landed to the peninsula, they could have bombarded, like they might hit their own soldiers as well, actually. Many ifs and buts, ifs and buts. like we had only 160 soldiers defending all this area those 160 Turkish soldiers first 15 minutes like first half an hour they were shooting onto the hands like with just single shot rifles but when they saw thousands of men are coming on this side you know they scared and they start moving back and after them till 10 o'clock no Turks was exist on the hill here so the hands just came in landed and they tried to go up Liman von Sanders, like the head commander of Turks, when he got this report, like when the landing started, he thought this might be the fake landing. It could be. And he didn't send any of our soldiers to the site. He waited all day in Gulf of Saros because the battleships were bombarding that area as well. He thought after the bombardments, the troops will land on that part as well. But that is providing donkey rides for the children for a penny a ride. The animals responded well to his gentle, kind manner. He seemed to have an instinctive attachment with them. At age 17, he joined the Merchant Navy and in 1910 arrived in Newcastle, Australia. For the next few years, John worked a series of jobs, cane cutting, cattle droving, coal mining, humping the bluey, better known nowadays as, black, as backpacking. <laughs> At the age of 22, Simpson enlisted in Perth just three weeks after the outbreak of World War I. Eight months after enlisting, Simpson landed at Anzac Cove, Gallipoli, as a stretcher bearer with C-section, three fur field ambulance, 1st Australian Division, Australian IIF. Just after dawn on Sunday, April the 25th, 1915, he waded ashore. Simpson was the second man in the water. The first and third man were killed. There was a shortage of stretchers, medical equipment and supplies. Stretcher parties were reduced from six men to two. Several donkeys were landed and some had been abandoned and were grazing in the wild overground gullies. Simpson saw a donkey gra grazing nearby and decided to use the donkey to help carry wounded men to the field hospital. <laughs> Would anybody like to take over or will I keep going? Keep
and the first organized tours visited Golubli Peninsula in 1934 actually. Uh, before 25th of April in 1934, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, he wrote one speech. The speech was written on a monument later as well. Those heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives. You are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmet to us. Where they lie, side by side, here in this country of ours. You know mothers, who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their lives on this land, they have became our sons as well. Atatürk, 1934. And today, like if you ask any Turkish person, what do you feel about the Golubli? What do you feel about the Anzac? They all say the same thing, actually. Once upon a time, they were against each other, but they lost their lives for nothing and they lying in the same place. They are in peace now. Now that's the beach they were supposed to land at, and the guns at Kanaki were killed them. April 15th, 25th, 1915. According to the plan, on 6th of August at 2.30 p.m., British and a French soldier will start fighting from the Kaipala side, aiming to keep this Turkish soldier at Kallis. Actually, their main object was to capture that high school in the backyard. See this little high school in the sky. It is the Achi Baba, which the British soldier was supposed to be capturing that high school in Kallis. And at 5.30 in the afternoon, Australian soldiers start fighting from India. Like the year French were on the cross, 4,000 soldiers, and Anzacs lost 2,200 soldiers just in the third day, about a two times per day. Like this is much crazy. And when it gets dark on 6th of August, New Zealanders soldiers start affecting from the seashore towards the north. When they pass the Chinook Bayer, they turn east and try to attack behind the Turkish troops at Chinook Bayer. You know, they were trying to circle around them. And that night again, at 10.30 p.m. on 6th of August, the U3 division came from Britain, like about 20,000 British soldiers. Here's one of the remnants of an Australian trench. Zigzag, of course. <laughs> 